everyone. Thanks for joining us on this lovely afternoon. Uh, I'm Joseph from Personally. We're a programmatic uh, DSP based here in Israel, providing UA and retargeting services. I'm the director of machine learning product. And I'm joined by the lovely Lidor Feldman from Papaya, who will quickly introduce herself. <laughs> yeah, thank you. This is my audience. Uh, nice seeing some uh, familiar faces. It uh, helps uh, to my stress uh, level. And uh, thanks for inviting me. Sure. So Lidor leads the retargeting and cross promotion activity in Papaya. We've been working together for four years, which is a lot in EdTech. And we have uh, a bunch of stories to tell. Uh, the idea of this uh, session is to tell you the things you need in order to succeed in retargeting. Uh, things aren't always as obvious as they seem, uh, especially when it comes to ad tech. Measurement is complex and important to understand. So we'll cover those things. Talk a lot about communication, both personal and business, because it's hard. And uh, give you a bit of anecdotes about our experience working together. Uh, the idea is, is really to try and give you the, the core things you need in order to succeed. Uh, and uh, the Gen AI pictures are about like building a foundation and a building together. So I'm like very proud of my ideas. There. Definitely. <laughs> so uh, we need to start talking about the foundation. Uh, and first thing, as we said already, about uh, any marketing activity is measurement KPIs. Uh, and obviously, there are inherent differences between UI and retargeting. I'd be happy if you could speak about that for a bit. Sure, of course. Um, so first, you need to understand that uh, when you start retargeting activity, it's a separated activity from the UA. And you need to start uh, to define it uh, with measurement and some other metrics uh, and measure it separately to the user acquisition one. Uh, you can work with your uh, analytics uh, department in order to define everything and establish it. Um, work with the MMP, the right MMP, to do the, the setup uh, with some tracking links or uh, deep links uh, that could be also uh, help a lot. Um, and that's it for now. Yeah, so one important thing is about making sure you can relate the performance that you get out of the retargeting campaigns with the original user acquisition cost. Definitely. Yeah, yeah so you need to, to make sure that the new attribution from retargeting um, see the impact on the first UA uh, install, as uh, Joseph just said, um, and check after that the results as a unified one. Yeah, it's not super intuitive always, and it requires the know-how, and you need your, your, BI to understand, your BI team to understand what you're doing, uh, what you want them to do. So it's key. It's very important. Uh, other than this, you know, the KPIs are, I mean, they have the same names as UA, but obviously you have different targets. There are different balances between them. Uh, one thing uh, that uh, at least as a DSP comes up a lot for us is about uh, communicating uh, the, the KPIs according to different stages of the campaign lifecycle. Uh, when you're starting off, you want to be a bit more patient uh, towards uh, you know the learning curve. If something looks really good very quickly, that's actually suspicious. So uh, do you have anything to add about that? Uh, yeah, the initial uh, KPIs that you have are not necessarily the ones that you will uh, keep uh, target them. Uh, so you need to do some A-B test in order to understand if this is the right KPIs for you. Uh, it depends also on the product uh, changes, uh, game mature, some different uh, OS platform, so you can always keep uh, measuring it and test what will be the right targets. Yeah, constantly changes, something you need to understand and not assume. We'll touch that more. Uh, just to wrap up this part, um, we wrote down attribution must-haves because uh, this is something, if you want to get a retargeting activity going and you really want to scale it effectively, uh, deep links are a must, uh, both in terms of just making the conversion rates work better and making the funnel shorter. One less click is a huge, huge deal. Uh, and this allows you also to work with uh, giving your users promotions and using the, your creative messaging to work together with that. So uh, it might take a bit to adapt to it. It might not be intuitive for your team, but it's a game changer. So I would never give up on that. Uh, and the last part is more of an anecdote that I keep saying because it keeps happening uh, about communicating 
between partners. Like this, the, the whole uh, supply and demand uh, uh, relationship is contentious and uh, you sometimes can forget you're on the same team. Uh, so sharing actual relevant benchmarks, sharing the actual KPIs and not some sort of uh, stretch goal that's not realistic is key to start correctly because uh, these benchmarks, these KPIs are used by the DSP or wh whichever channel you're using as like a goalpost. And if it doesn't make any sense, you're gonna have a bad time. Yeah, you need to compare apples to apples. So if you want to give some benchmark to the DSP, try to do it with another DSP uh, so it makes sense. And it's a win-win situation once you represent uh, one picture that can support both sides uh, to grow. Honesty is the best policy. Uh, next up is measurement, uh, which is also a complex topic. Uh, when it comes to retargeting and what we're covering here, things are still deterministic. They're going to stay that way for a while, it seems. Uh, but there are inherent complexities with uh, retargeting activities that are around incrementality, uh, which is, a, is, which is a, you know, a buzzword you'll hear thrown around a lot. Uh, and uh, in most cases, it seems like people just said, just in order to try and trick you and show you uh, they know what they're doing. In your case, obviously different. I'd be happy if you could expand a bit about how you're looking at that. Um, so I'll start with an uplift test or an incrementality one, uh, you name it. Uh, you want to understand for retargeting um, what is your paid activity uh, do and, co and compare it to the organic traffic. Uh, you want to investigate the churn uh, percentage uh, and then check it after you start the retargeting activity. Um, I think this is the basic one, uh, but if um, to elaborate a bit more, you want to keep um, test when is the right time to target the users for retargeting. It could be changed according to the uh, geos, to the OS platform. Also, um, not all the segments should be targeted at the same time. But in order to keep things uh, simple, you can um, take the uh, lowest common denominator and uh, test it and measure it according to that. Uh, I think it is, this is the, the overall picture. Yeah, that's the core. Uh, one thing that's important is not to neglect it. Uh, because uh, if you're in a position where you're considering uh, starting the retargeting activity, there's something to work with, uh, which means you should, uh, you have like an extensive UA activity, you wanna make sure you're not uh, actually measuring their performance with your campaign. So uh, doing this incrementality test, which sounds again like this. Buzzword. Yeah, but in reality, you have a control group, you're not touching them, you're measuring them versus the ones that you do touch. You just need to sustain it, you need support from it from your BI team or from your uh, at uh, DSP, we provide that. We, we can do that for you. Uh, Papaya has their own abilities, but some of our partners don't, so we suggest them to start off with a test like this just to see what they're gonna get. Uh, the other point here is about uh, the way you should measure the activity because, you know, whenever you have these, like, panels or whatever, people talk about, like, what KPI are you optimizing towards? And obviously, it's a bunch of bullshit because, I mean, it's always the same things. We're all talking about the bottom line, but uh, things uh, interact with one another. Uh, so like the way we're looking at it, it's sort of a triangle between like your per unit cost. Each company calls it differently, CPR, CPRU, CP, whatever. Also in Papaya, yeah. we have different names for yeah. the same metrics. So you have your unit cost, you have your ROI, and you have your retention. You need to find the right balance for each platform between them. You need to look at them together. Uh, there's no North Star, there are a bunch of stars. And you need to be an astronomer or whatever. Yeah, it also really depends on for what the retargeting activity is. Um, does it for uh, support the UA? Is it in order to bring the profitable uh, user to your game again? Or to support the uh, DAO in your company? So you need to uh, find and uh, define um, various uh, KPIs according to the strategy that you want. Yep. And this brings us to the toughest part in each relationship and probably in any human interaction. This is my favorite one. Yeah, communication and making sure you're both doing the right thing. Uh, so, yeah, 
do you want to add a little bit about how you're looking at it when you're starting relationships with partners or an ongoing one? No, you can take it. Okay. Just kidding. Um, so. That's a good example of a pretty established relationship. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, as we said before, it all starts with uh, honesty or transparency. Um, and in Papaya, for example, we have an internal logic to measure the retargeting activity. And it's really uh, important to transfer it to your partners because they see one picture in the MMP results, but we have another uh, picture and you want to combine between them. It's a win-win situation where you both see the same picture. Um, also, when um, do some setup in the MMP, um, you want that the partners will understand what are the events, what's they defined from, um, when uh, they will receive it, um, and what will be the two main goals for the, the optimization uh, for this campaign. And also because we have some internal uh, logic, we are also sharing our data, so we all be uh, aligned uh, with how the results are uh, performing. Um, and it's very important that during the time, things are like starting to be familiar for both sides, or you just think that they already know, but it's important to make some alignment during the way. Yeah, it's funny that like one common mistake that still happens is like gross and net uh, ROAS <laughs> and then stuff like that. Uh, you you get that like every one out of 10, 15 clients to you like, wait, yeah. <laughs> and that, that, it's a massive difference and everything's off and uh, that can suck. So yeah, th these things are funny, but they're like the core of everything. Um, so communication needs to be clear, concise, both sides need to, under, needs to understand one another. You don't need to uh, give each other too much, uh, you know, imp, uh, imp, false impressions. Just talk uh, realistically and remember that you're working together. Yeah, yeah definitely. Uh, so now I just want to cover a bit of our uh, success together, what we've been doing in these past uh, four years, uh, Persona and Papaya. Uh, the first thing we were able to do uh, roughly a year and a half ago, something like that, uh, was around uh, using uh, our more advanced advanced uh, machine learning uh, techniques for creative selection in order to select the right creative, especially for papaya retargeting activities. So two things that affect both the retention and the probability of the user to pay more is his activity inside the app overall compared to all the other users, which like quantile of activity is in, and the, obviously the time frame of inactivity. Uh, so when we select creatives for uh, retargeting campaigns, uh, the models get this as part of the feature set, and they select the right creative accordingly. Uh, different promotions, different stuff, and this allows for a lift that reduces our CPR, use CPR, or however you call your unit cost for retargeting, even lower. The other thing is actually uh, a huge uh, example of uh, communication and how critical it is. Uh, six, seven months ago, uh, we understood that our measurement uh, for the actual ROI uh, for Papaya was wrong. Like we had this discrepancy uh, because they have their internal methods, they have different events and uh, a unique setup. And we missed it and it was that way for a long time. It still allowed the activity to be uh, relatively healthy, but it was blocking us from growing. Uh, Lidor was aggressive enough <laughs> to say, listen, we can't go on like this anymore. We met a week after that. We solved it. It was very easy to fix, <laughs> you know, in retrospect. Yeah, it all starts with one discrepancy yeah. that just continue to misunderstanding. Um, but once we align the, that we are looking at the result with net revenue in, instead of gross revenue, you just need to see yeah. the, the graph of what happened. Yeah, so we were able to grow the relationship significantly by 60% over the past six months. Recently, we're seeing even more growth. Uh, but yeah, the key takeaway here is that these mistakes can happen years and years into the relationship, not necessarily if anything changed. Uh, there's an expression in Russian, I don't know how to say it, uh, we hear it a lot from developers, it's uh, underwater storms. You have like these surprises that are there all the time and uh, you need to talk about them and, and it's okay to make mistakes. Um, so yeah, to summarize, 
uh, and try to give you some actionable uh, things. Because you know, measurement and everything, you, you all have your unique things, you need to find your own balance. Uh, but when it comes to the actual health uh, of the activity and the integration, make sure the integration actually works. Don't assume it does. Uh, if you're seeing the numbers, it doesn't mean they're measured exactly the same way on both sides. So when you're getting those offline reports, if your partner is kind enough to pass them to you, look at them. Don't just delete them automatically, as Oops. one would. <laughs> um, Keep communication simple. You you just you, you, again you have a you have a common goal. You don't need to just try and stump one another, which can happen in these contentious uh, UA relationships and retargeting relationships. And never assume because that makes an S out of you and me. That's like <laughs> the joke of the thing. Good yeah. Joke. Uh, if anyone has any questions, the door knows too much things about retargeting, so this is a good time. And, but otherwise, thank you for your time and being here. Thank you very much. <laughs>